Because um, all, all the other women would have been too old, whereas she oh, would have yes. been the right age when this thing was being done. Oh. See? So 40 years later, Pat Bloud was about the same age as Diane Lane, so they got the... And yeah, that makes sense. You have to understand, they, they, uh, they were also talking about the fact, they were talking, the film editing was brilliant, because there were times, that what they did, they were running archival footage of, the, of, of Decker, Galafini, Robbins, and, and Lane with the characters they were playing. At times, they melded into one yeah. another. They basically nailed the look and everything so perfect. And, and the characterizations, yeah. the, phys the physical. They, they basically were doing the movements of these people, everything that you could think of. So, in a sense, it was brilliant performances by the people that mm -hmm. were there. So they will deserve their Emmys if they yeah. get them. So, but, um, but you learn a lot. I mean, Diane Lane was on for a, a long time. She was on for much of the movie. Before, yeah, you know, it was it was her movie. Mm -hmm. And you know, Robbins came in and out, Decker came in and out, and Galafini came in and out. But this was, she was a this was a woman's too. movie, totally. Mm -hmm. It was a woman. If you're a woman, it's what we were. got a woman director. They also had two directors, a male and a female. I'll lay you odds that the woman was always on on Lane's side, and the male was always on the side of the three guys. I bet so. That's why she says she liked working with two because that if she uh, is a balance, is a balance, you know, but. Uh, the balance being that the woman was always on her side, and, and the guys had the smaller parts anyway. It is hers. It is hers. Like it, it, Wait, it, in the original one, was it really focused on Pat Loud? And yeah. Then, okay. It was so, Pat Loud. It was all Pat Loud. So it, it's very true to form on that. And that's why the the more material on Pat Loud, then I mean, and also you know she's playing Loud as a, you know you've got to pay attention to the little things that's going on. Pat Loud condemn people for smoking around her children. She smoked and the children all smoked. Mm -hmm. Just minor Except little, for Lance. Uh, Lance. Lance wasn't to smoke. Mm -hmm. But she smoked in front of him. Mm -hmm. So Now, and, and I, here's the part. Is I'm really intrigued by this, so now I want to go back and see the original yeah. um, movie or series, but I don't it was you can't even buy it, can no, you? No, it's not on DVD. It's not available. They I, said, they said uh, what is it, I think Thomas Decker said, they tried it out once every 10 years. And I remember some guy said he saw it on PBS and he recorded it. had a it. marathon session, they did all the episodes back to back because they take, they bring it out and then they take it off because it is, it is basically, it is a polarizing show. Mm -hmm. Because it is, uh, they referred to it, I mean basically what they did was they showed at the end, you know, the, the thing, the All-American Family and it's got the, like the screen is broken, it's shattered. Mm -hmm. Well, now it makes you reflect, you look at this, Cinema Verde, and then now you look at reality TV. Yeah. It's, it's, it's where it all came from. Reality TV, like I said, listen closely, go watch the movie and watch Tim Robbins. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, we've got to do something to get people's attention, something like that, you know. And how many, let's see. And remember, he was sent there, okay, is this one good? Is this one good? And, he, and you know, like they say, we're not supposed to be talking to us. And he said, they all know you're here. Mm -hmm. So therefore, he's talking to the camera people because he's, you know, what the heck is the difference? They know you're they, here. They know you're here and you're talking to the, like, the audience. That's right, just, just like the audience because the louds were, a, mm -hmm. no matter what it is, they were a performing family. They mm -hmm. were performing. They just didn't realize, okay, they weren't film and TV people. Mm -hmm. They were from another area, you know, uh, and... They didn't realize what could be done within the editing room, and they twisted everything. Well, and you know, somebody has a slogan that's called "Living Out Loud." Yeah. Well, it, in a way, it's like their last name was perfect for it, Loud. Yeah. And it, it, I mean, I mean, I have no idea what the lady was like <laughs> before I saw her. All I know is that nobody liked her after they saw her. And and, and, she and they could, a lot of it could have been because of the publicity and everything surrounding it. Yeah, she could have just gotten more hard. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you watch the character, the character from the day they came in did not like what was being done. But she kept doing it because, you know, the Diane Lane character, because she wanted to get even with her husband. Mm -hmm. It was all about getting even with her husband. She didn't intend to hurt the children because neither one of them wanted to hurt the children. I mean, like, he had, this look, this, you know, that, that uh, Bill Loud had the least to do with Lance of all the children, but guess mm -hmm. who was the favorite child of both husband and wife? Mm -hmm. Was it son, you know, Lance. Mm -hmm. He was the uh, apple of both their eyes. 
Daddy gave him everything he wanted to give him, made certain that he was treated better than the other kids. Oh and yeah, I remember that one part in the movie where they, they were sitting there stuck. He's like, Where are you do why are you doing this? Where did you get the money for this? Where do you think the money comes from? Yeah. You're gonna go work in the cement thing and you're gonna go work in such and such. Yeah. And I think Lance took off to Europe. <laughs> Lance took off to Paris, so you know, with uh, right. But everybody did become very, I mean, so-called, it's a shattered family. What a shattered family came out, the typical American family. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it ended up with a happy ending. You know, Lance unfortunately died from AIDS, but mm -hmm. he, from that period, like I said, it was from drug use, not more or less, you know, because he was fooling around with uh, drugs he shouldn't have been using. But, um, you know, it's one of those things It's like stuff happens, life happens, and yeah. the rest is how you deal with it. That's right. And mm -hmm. they allowed, basically dealt with it. That, you know, first of all, uh, I'll lay you odds that if they didn't know it was going to come out the way it came out, that, that, it, that he, she would have done it anyway. Mm -hmm. Because it served a point for her. She was making a statement. Yeah, I remember and when they were sitting there talking about it, and he's like, well, why do we want to do this? And she said, well, would you rather see such and such family on your TV? Yeah, that was it. You want to have them, you know, and they picked them because they know they were they were a dysfunctional family. But God, the family of all the country. Okay, I mean, I, my family, my father was in the entertainment business, my mother was in the restaurant business, my father built houses, my mother helped to run cinema mm -hmm. chains. But they were never, almost never there at the same time but we we did we went on vacations together we, we did all kinds of things together but that was the type of family the lounge basically where everybody was you know you didn't eat and you didn't sit down at the table and eat you, everybody was doing you know own your own room you're doing this you're doing that so i mean like half the time I remember when i was young my mother would she'd call up my grandmother said uh, where's your grandson at and he said well he's, he's over here working with john wayne and he said, uh, "Well, tell, tell your, you know, your grandson that his father is going to come pick him up in a squad car later." Mm -hmm. So, you know, she didn't call me by my name. She went to talking to grandmother. He was your grandson, or my father. Tell your son that he's supposed to be back to do this tonight. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, we're a typical dysfunctional. California family. They're Cal they're, these guys were rich cats from Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing that she's probably more Santa barbara -ish than she was. You know, she'd have been out of place in Los Angeles. But in Santa Barbara, oh, that's not good. They had, they, they had horses. They had swimming pools. They had all of this. They had convertible Mercedes. Yeah, so, but, uh, you know, we're, you know, we're, you know, it's our review. If, if you want to see the destruction of a, you want to see the destruction of broadcast Television. You want to see the introduction of. Um, well, of, this is of, about you know, this. This is about history. It is history, and it is really, it, and like I said, you this the characters fit seamlessly. All you got to do is look at the beginning of the movie, which sets it all up, where the characters are are going flittering well, back and forth. And you and see the evolution. Yeah. Of the characters. Yeah. As, as as you see the effects of having the cameras on them all the time. I mean, think about you. It's like, in your life, how would you like it if a camera was with you all the time? Yeah. So they, you know, so it, it but the day it is, I mean, I got, we got the cameras with us all the time too, so, I mean, I shy people on when I'm on camera because I'm an introverted extrovert, which means I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm a moderate liberal, I'm a conservative liberal, all of these things. But I don't, I don't tend to talk to people. I mean, we absolutely, she'll tell you, she's got, we went to events and they think, doesn't he like me? I said, no, he just doesn't give a damn. <laughs> they don't yeah, care. they're like, oh, yeah, they do. They I go, I go the same way as when I was doing this stuff when I was younger. I go because it was something I was supposed to do. I didn't want to go, but I did it. Mm -hmm. I stopped appearing on camera a decade ago. I'm back on again. But, um, I do, when I'm on camera, which is not as a whole lot, no matter what people may think, what happens is, is we're on, the one guy said we're on 11 different sites, I didn't realize that. We are? Yeah, somebody said we're on 11 different sites. Um, I'm only on some of them. Some of them. I'm not on the other. She is, you know. Um, so what happens is, if you look at the old cam, or you look at news video web, you tend to see me a lot. But if you look at the others, I'm, I'm, I'm maybe a voice in the background or have nothing. 
she does, uh, you know, her stuff. I'm nowhere near her stuff because I don't do it. I mean, I, I have. You know, generally I don't because the reasons are because I've worked. I, it, You're it, working. I, I'm working. I'm, I'm, I do the directing stuff, but I also do the editing. Like I said, I will change things that she's done. I'll re-edit it totally. So I will change the nature of what was done if I get my hands on some stuff. So right mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm screwing with some stuff right now. Which it probably shouldn't be, but, um, but I can understand what you can do. What an editor's can be vicious, totally. Well, I mean, I can always understand. Um, for for example, if if I look at a photo, I can often tell unless it's just a straight photo line. I can tell sometimes if the t photographer likes actor or actress. Yeah. Can't oh, I, you? I always knew. I mean, I could you tell. I mean, I was I was doing some stuff on the Virginian, and the director of photographer's wife would do guest episodes, and it basically he loved his wife. I also work with Sid Charisse. Sid Charisse, I hate Amra. The cinematographers love Sid Charisse. But you can you can tell. Yeah, because they'll do everything differently. And also with the interviews, when I've asked people, you know, they're going to do an interview, there's people that I've interviewed before and they're like, oh, they love me, let's go do another one, right? Yeah. And then there's other people who I haven't met before, and they're like, well, um, what kind of questions are you going to ask? Or what? Yeah. And you can tell that they have been stung before. Oh, yeah. We, we, we so, but uh, it's just it's um, got you filmmaking started in this thing, mm -hmm. and this is just a history of got you filmmaking and destruction. It's it is, it basically it's like Phoenix Rising. They got everything they wanted in the end, mm -hmm. everything, totally. I mean, they got what you. They they just didn't realize all the stuff they'd have to go through. No, because they were very like did point out that she. That, that's what uh, Diane Lane said. The woman was, if she was, if she was had the same thing to do today, she would know better. But because they were the first, it shouldn't have been done. This should never have been approved by. I do remember, they wanted to know who the hell at public broadcasting approved the expenditure for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking left and the right. They did not like this, because it gave the uh, it, it gave the battle cry to the people on the right to shut down public broadcasting. Mm -hmm. And so for 40 years they've been fighting because this show set the... the Which day. is they bring it out every 10 years is they don't want that fight they, against them. They don't them. want that fight, so, and you know, I find it amazing that, it's, that this movie was made on the 10th year. It's also the 10th anniversary of Lance's death. Mm -hmm. You know, the 10th, the tenth, you know, the time that this thing comes out be ran, they go to the Falls again, but, uh, you know, we're... But here's one of the things that since... This is a whole new movie, right? Yeah. Whole new subject. This movie can't be buried over ten years. No, this is meant to be. Uh, right. I know. It's just it's. Because uh, I don't think that type of agreement exists. I mean. Not on a movie, no. Yeah. But it's uh, you know, you know, find it entertaining. I mean, we didn't realize we were going to get the entire thing, so we did. So it's uh, you know, it's aspect ratio one point seven eight to one. Basically, it is. Does it show the running time? Uh, I don't know. I think it was an hour and a half. Though. Yeah, I think, about I think it was right about an hour and a half. We don't have the running time listed on this thing, so we got everything else but no running time. But uh, you know, it's a good thing. You get you get some education by it. The trick is, I wish that you'd be able to see the question and answer period that was done that was after. That was amazing. Yeah. I was reading it's one of the things you know that's important because she's beginning. You know, we got another opportunity tonight. Next week we're gonna have a. Get another opportunity, so. But you really gain a true appreciation for, I'll say, the craft. Yeah, and the place is full of people that are, are in the business. Everybody is as serious as can be about what's going on because they're serious. I mean, it's it's, it's not a paparazzi mm -hmm. session. Mm -hmm. You know, people have their little cameras for personal pictures and stuff, and that's about it. But uh, there's no there's no film camera running. It's just basically them talking about the characters and stuff because they're they're I'm trying to explain to people their motivation because they are Emmy screening things. They're looking for uh, to get an Emmy award. I mean, I'm guessing Decker will probably pick up an Emmy because he, his character is really over the top. And then Galafini, you know, Robbins is playing. Robbins is basically all of them are really good. But they're all they're all going to get nominations. I would guess they, they were all very good. But it's probably. Um, Decker and Lane that will come up with the Emmys unless something else is better than that. I remember somebody saying that 
they really like, um, like to see um, James Gandolfini in it because they associate so much of him as a character for Sopranos. Yeah. And they like to see him in a different role. Oh yeah, I can remember Gandolfini when he was more like this <coughs> character except Trimmer. When he was Trimmer, he used to have, you know, that beard and that stuff. Really? On. Yeah. What well, was he got rid of it to play in the Sopranos? You know, he said, you know, this this overweight type was not Galafini when he was well, young. You know, uh, you know, when they cut from him to the other guy, you look, yeah. oh. you, you almost look like, did he just lose weight? Yeah, <laughs> I know because I just take a second look. They'll, they'll get. It is the best piece of editing I've seen in a long time. Go look at the opening of the movie. <coughs> you'll see something. You'll see an opening sequence that, as it should be done, you know, not you know, and you see the tail of the movie is basically the same. Yeah. Basically, you can tell effort was put into it. A lot. Instead of like a lot of companies, that basically they they'll give you a good opening and then just throw the mm -hmm. tail on. No, they basically at the end they wanted to make certain that everybody knew that the dysfunctional family basically did well. All of them did well. They all, all their dreams came true. It all came true because of a, a something that was a mistake. Mm -hmm. So, but I guess uh, until next time, this is okay. And this is not a spring chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for more information, you can go to www.montybubbles.net on the net. Wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily newscast in 3D. And thank you for over 40 million links. <laughs>